All right, guys, welcome back. So now we're going to take a look at some basic schematic symbols, and then we'll tie it all together to learn how to read and develop a schematic diagram. So most of the equipment that you're going to be working on will have some type of wiring diagram, schematic diagram, ladder diagram, or a combination of all of those three. And they're found on the inside cover of the condensing unit, the air handler, or if it's a rooftop unit. Sometimes there are, on the rooftop units, there are packets of information in there as well. So a schematic diagram is going, and, and the wiring diagrams are going to help you take this big jumble of mess that it would be very difficult to figure out. It lays it out nice and clear right here, and this is going to be your roadmap to figure out what's happening over here in the real equipment electrically, and it'll give you a an idea of and and a, and a, not an idea, but it's going to draw a clear roadmap of of where you should look and how you should look, and it just kind of straightens out this mess over here, so that you can uh, troubleshoot troubleshoot electrically. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here are motors. You're going to run into tons of different kinds of motors in HVAC equipment, including things like com compressors and pumps as well. But here's just a couple different motors that we're that you're going to look at here. The different motors that we see here, here's the shaded pole motor. Let's take a look at that. Shaded pole motor has its own schematic symbol that is right, right here. Now, the one thing about schematic symbols, they are not universal. They're similar in nature, but depending on the manufacturer of the equipment, it may look different. Right now, again, there are no no standards, but they're all pretty close to the same, and many of the manufacturers use the same symbols as well. So don't get confused if you see a motor that you don't see in these schematic symbols here that we're showing today. Okay, so here we have a PSC motor, permanent split capacitor motor. Which is multi-speed because it has many different wires on it. There's your schematic symbol for that. And then the other motor that we looked at, just the PSC motor without the multi-speed, looks like this. Okay, so most of the manufacturers they will have a legend, and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail, but they'll have a, a legend that'll say um, CFM, maybe. Could say something else, which stands for condenser fan motor, or it may say COMP on it, which tells you that it is the compressor motor. So you won't have too much, of, too difficult of time of identifying what they what they belong to. Okay, heaters. These are resistant heaters. These are, this example here, are the electric strip heaters that you'd find in a heat pump or an electric furnace. And this is a pretty universal symbol for a heater, and that's that this zigzag line like this. This can be big electric strip heaters that are 10 kW or it can be a tiny heater in a oil sensing oil pressure sensing device in a big commercial equipment that just makes a tiny amount of heat or it could be a crankcase heater any type of heat producing device in HVAC is going to be going to be dis displayed on the schematic diagram using the zigzagged lines like this. And again, I talked about with motors with the legends. Um, in the schematic diagram, when we look at them in detail, uh, on the bottom they'll have a legend. And in this schematic symbol diagram here, this legend tells you that the RH stands for resistance heater. Switches. So those are whether they, they're contactors or relays or manual switches, they are normally displayed as you see over here. And we have a couple different types of switches. They have 
single pole, single throw, which means it's on or off and it only it only connects one set of wires when you open or close the switches. So that's single pole, open, close, one and single throw. This goes back up. Single pole, one set of contacts here, single throw, it's either on or off. Then we have the double pole single throw, which means you have two circuits that are connected and they're either on or off. And then you have double pole, double throw, which means you can you can have a cir one circuit on, one circuit off, the other circuit on, and that is displayed by this schematic symbol. I don't think that I have ever seen single pole, double throw, manual switches in any HVAC equipment. Maybe on a disconnect it would be double pole, single throw, number two. But in the HVAC equipment themselves, we don't have these type of switches. Fused disconnect. This is usually outside of the unit and it is installed as part of the installation. It doesn't come with the unit themselves. And just for safety reasons, and so you know this, the fused disconnect or any type of service disconnect needs to be within sight of the equipment can't be in another room or out of sight where you if you turn it off someone can accidentally turn it on because they don't see you or you don't see them and it it will if it's not an integral part of the unit it may not be on the schematic diagram it they sometimes put that uh, as a field accessory on the schematic diagram but if you don't see it, don't worry about it, but this is what your fuse disconnect looks looks like here. And again, if, if this is part, if it does come as part of the equipment and it says FD or whatever it may have here, you can look down on the legend that decodes this, uh, this, this designator here. And this one would be a fused disconnect. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. We'll move on to some more schematic symbols in the next video.